This is a story of transformation and extraordinary power of human ingenuity to shape the course of history. For decades, the nations of Africa and the Global South have grappled with the daunting challenge of development. Stuck with unfair economic trade and limited access to resources, millions have been left on the margins of society, their dreams crashed by the harsh realities of poverty. Yet, hope emerged from the East. China, once a sleeping giant, rose with unparalleled vigor, igniting a revolution in manufacturing and commerce that reverberated across continents. At the heart of this revolution lay a simple truth, the ability to produce goods at a fraction of the cost without compromising on quality. Through persistent innovation and unwavering determination, Chinese industries unleashed a wave of affordable products that flooded the world's markets. But this was not just a story of profit and market dominance. No, it was a story of empowerment of millions in Africa and the global south who found themselves suddenly able to afford the basic necessities of life. Between 1990 and 2013, China contributed to approximately 70% of the global reduction in the number of people living in extreme poverty. From the bustling streets of Lagos, Cairo, Accra to the remote villages of Zambia, Zimbabwe, Congo and South Africa, the impact was undeniable. Families that once struggled to make ends meet now had access to affordable clothing, electronics and household goods. Children who once lacked access to education now held the tools of learning in their hands. And communities that once suffered in the shadows of poverty saw the promise of a brighter future. The rise of China in manufacturing cheaper goods was not just a boon for its own economy, but a lifeline for millions around the world. Yeah, 15, 16. Just get inside this one and walk through. 16, this one. Yeah. Boarding a high-speed train from Beijing to Shanghai is an exciting experience. Without noticing, we transited into a world of speed, comfort and efficiency. Stepping onto the platform, anticipation builds, knowing that in just a few hours we'll traverse vast distances, passing through diverse landscapes at velocities that defy imagination. These trains symbolize China's commitment to progress. Here is something you may not know. China's high-speed train stations resemble airports in design and functionality. Welcome to Shanghai, my Shanghai, situated on China's eastern coast, is renowned for its harmonious blend of modernity and tradition. As one of the world's largest cities, its skyline is dominated by impressive skyscrapers, notably the iconic Oriental Pearl Tower. Serving as a global financial hub, it houses the Shanghai Stock Exchange and hosts numerous multinational corporations. The city's rich history is evident in its landmarks, such as the Yu Garden and the Bund Waterfront area. One compelling reason to visit China is its cuisine. But Shanghai offers much more than just food. 
its vibrant arts and culture scene are also worth exploring. The First Opium War marks the beginning of China's century of humiliation. Shanghai, a small fishing village, becomes a treaty port under the Treaty of Nanjing. After a long battle with imperialists who employed deceitful tactics, such as forcing millions of people to use opium, China was pressured to permit Europeans to control its markets and grant them more rights over much of Shanghai. The Taiping Rebellion, which lasted from 1853 to 1864, ravaged China, causing chaos and destruction. Shanghai suffered greatly, but the influx of refugees brought reconstruction and opportunities. The First Chinese-Japanese War ends disastrously for China, leading to the loss of Taiwan and a humiliating defeat. Shanghai, occupied by foreign powers, experienced economic exploitation mainly by the Japanese, the French, the British and the Americans. From 1937 to 1945, the Second Chinese-Japanese War plunged Shanghai again into darkness as the city under the Japanese Imperial Army facilitated the Nanyang Massacre, which left an indelible scar on the nation's psyche. In 1949, three years after the end of the Second World War, the Communist Party of China, CPC, emerged victorious in the Chinese Civil War. Shanghai was finally liberated, marking the end of foreign control of China. The city began its journey of reconstruction under communist rule. Here is an interesting fact you need to know about Shanghai. The city became a refuge for thousands of Jewish refugees fleeing persecution in Europe. The Communist Party of China unconditionally welcomed them in the city. Shanghai was one of the only cities in the world to do so. In 1978, the revolutionary Chinese, Deng Xiaoping initiated economic reforms, which brought a new era of openness and modernization. Shanghai became a pioneer in China's economic transformation, attracting foreign investment and implementing market-oriented reforms. By the late 90s, Shanghai went through a dramatic transformation with the development of the Pudong district, the creation of the Shanghai Stock Exchange, and the construction of iconic skyscrapers like the Oriental Pearl Tower, the symbols of Shanghai's emergence as a global financial center. The Shanghai Tower is the second tallest building globally, reaching a height of 632 meters. Its unique twisted design helps it endure strong winds. But isn't just for offices. It also has hotels, shops, and observation decks. Despite its size and complexity, construction finished in only seven years, from 2008 to 2015. Let's explore the interior of the Shanghai Tower. <laughs> so now, this is the Hanifan Tower. Yeah. Because you need all that top. So today, you know, the according to the architecture, international standard, anything including the building, you have to catch, you have to uh, cover this. Yeah. That's why they put a needle. Because our tower, we don't have needle. If you want to get uh, get another 100 meter, we will put the antenna on top. But we don't want it. Yeah, that's why uh, maybe our lens is 632. Yeah. There is 800 something, but the antenna is not. Yeah. Yeah. Saudi Arabia is the biggest player. Um, they want to make the record, mm. but the, unfortunately, they stopped. No money, no tech. I think technical problem as well. Mm. I think, yeah. So, this is the third one. It's very cheeky. Look at that. Just a 10 meters different. Yeah. yeah. But they put the antenna. <laughs> So we don't have the antenna. You if you want to get another an antenna, yeah, you gotta be like that, right? That's why, I, yeah. You can see a lot of uh, high rise in China. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have, we don't put antenna on top. Yeah. Yeah. We should our exist to the uh, six scale. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, Ian can take this really, uh, yeah.
18th floor, 118th floor. You know, like Chinese, like a number yeah. eight. Yeah. Like number nine. So yeah. that's its auspicious name, mm -hmm. uh, number. Yeah. So we just uh, put on the 118. We're up to the end. That's why I'm 55 seconds only. Mm -hmm. But later on, you're going to have to feel yeah, yeah, pressure a little bit, but you just feel something there. Now to the elevator. This is the fastest elevator in the world. Now we were there, right? Yeah. yeah, we were there. We are there on the other side. Yeah. Wow. This is concrete jungle city, right? Yeah. 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 Wow. The aerial view is obstructed by the tinted glass. Here is.